right, we're going to turn it over to Stacy McIntyre. Okay. Well, thanks, Natalie, and thanks for inviting me um, to lead this virtual discussion um, about making healthy choices when eating out. Um, I'm a registered dietitian and a certified diabetes educator. Um, I'm currently working with Omnipod, which is an insulin uh, management system. But before that, I worked at Lexington Endocrinology, and that's how I met Natalie. So um, thank you again. And, it, you know, again, this eating out discussion, um, how many, and, and I do want you guys to interact, and, and I know it's kind of a small group, so it might be kind of awkward, but some of us maybe have not eaten out as much um, since the pandemic or, you know, since COVID. Maybe your eating out habits didn't really change. Um, since COVID has, you know, happened, but a study that was done um, pre-COVID suggested that most Americans eat out 4.9 times per week. So whether that's kind of a grab and go, or in a hurry, in a rush, um, or whether it's just for socialization, you know, maybe it's eating out for um, meeting out with friends or um, other adults. Um, it could just be a business meeting, right? So there's lots of opportunities for us to eat out in trying to incorporate those healthy choices um, and keep our blood sugar to control can sometimes be a challenge. So what I first wanted to do is just talk about a, a general, a very basic um, way of eating that you can apply when you're eating out um, or even at home, and that's called the plate method. Um, so I'm gonna switch my camera view and just show you a picture of this plate. And some of you might be familiar with this. Um, the plate method, like I said, it's just one way to um, help balance different food groups and portions. And so imagine just your plate, and I hope you guys can see this okay, but if you draw a line across the center of the plate, um, you should have three sections and then draw another um, quarter, basically. You should have three sections the largest section should be filled with non-starchy vegetables. So these vegetables, things like salad, green beans, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, carrots, kale, tomatoes, um, some of those summer vegetables that we're losing this time of year, cucumbers, um, should fill up half of your plate, okay? And then the, and the other two smaller sections, one fourth of that should be grains or starchy vegetables. So this might be whole grain breads. Um, it could be um, a cooked cereal like oatmeal, cream of wheat, uh, it could be rice, pasta, um, or even those starchy vegetables like beans, peas. So pinto beans, black eyed peas examples. This quarter could be um, potatoes, sorry, um, corn, lima beans, sweet potatoes could fill up a quarter of that plate. And then the other fourth of the plate um, should be some kind of lean protein. So chicken or turkey, fish, other seafood like shrimp or crab, um, could be cuts of lean beef or pork, um, or it could be some of your non-meat sources of protein like tofu or eggs and some lower fat cheeses. So using this kind of picture of this plate method, um, again, you can incorporate this even um, when you're preparing meals at home and trying to balance them or when you're eating out, but it allows you to make those healthy choices, especially because of those non-starchy vegetables being the largest portion on your plate. Um, those do not raise your blood sugar and so without having to measure portions or count calories per se, um, it allows you to still keep control of your blood sugar um, without having to do all those things. So keeping this plate in mind, you know, again, while we're eating out, what would that translate kind of into? I'm going to flip my camera back around now. Okay. So, um, you know, thinking about, you know, when you eat out, if it's a, a restaurant that you might sit down and order off of a menu, um, that's the perfect opportunity to ask your server about how foods are prepared if it's not specified in the menu. 
um, to ask questions, right? You are the guest, you are uh, the person that's paying for the food. So ask those questions, try to find out how um, things are prepared. And then also um, think about maybe switching outside. So you are kind of in control of what is even served as your side items um, with those meals. Um, and so you can, you know, even venture off the menu or, or maybe venture off of what is uh, necessarily accompanied, maybe the protein foods, you know, maybe it's um, an opportunity to double up on the vegetables, you know, or switch out maybe one of the starches if you're um, trying to watch your carbs, um, you know, instead of the baked potato, adding a second vegetable, you know, would be an option for you. Um, but even thinking about, so let's kind of think about like starters and appetizers. What would be some healthy options if you um, were at a restaurant? What would be some examples of healthy like appetizers or starters that you've seen on the menu that would kind of follow in line with, with our concept of lower carb, maybe more vegetables, higher protein? I don't need... Um starters very much but I'm thinking of maybe mushrooms yeah okay you know, they're, all, they're a little breaded but, but it's mostly mushrooms that's right yeah we don't order a lot of appetizers when we go out either um so I, I yeah um even maybe like a broth soup so a, a broth based soup chicken broth based soup might be an idea um, low in calorie. If you're watching your sodium, you know, that might be a concern, but about um, spinach dip. Okay. So spinach dip might be higher in fat. And again, I think you want to think about what's being served with it, right? So if it's tortilla chips or pita bread, um, I think it's fine if you were, if you were going to share that at a table, you know, to have a small serving, of course, but you're right. I mean, that, that does give you some extra vegetables, um, but be mindful of the tortilla chips and, you know, the pita bread. Yep. That's, um, that's served with it. Now, if you've got the options to do some veggies, you know, maybe this, um, you know, a big as celery and carrots and things like that. If you've got um, that as a vegetable, you know, option instead of, you know, the starches of the tortilla chips and, and pita bread, that might be a good choice. Anything else that you guys can think of? Thinking about healthy kind of starters or small plate options. What about hummus? I don't know if they, you know, yeah. have that maybe at a Greek restaurant or Mediterranean restaurant. Maybe that's yep. a, an appetizer. Yep. I think the hummus is, yeah. So the hummus would even be a, a healthier choice probably than your spinach dip, right? For yep. something, yep. you know, with a dip like that. And, and um, if there's an option for the veggies. Um, shrimp cocktail was another one that... Um, yeah, so the shrimp being lean, you know, low fat, um, the protein source, no carbs, you know, so even the shrimp with the cocktail sauce might be something good. If you're looking for something to munch on, maybe you're with friends and you're looking for something to munch on um, while you're visiting or socializing, you know, before you actually order off the menu. So those are some ideas for sure. And then as far as the salads go, so some of your, your dinners out might come with salad or you may um, choose for the salad. Um, so again, salad would give you those non-starchy vegetables. You just want to be mindful of the toppings that could add fat, like the bacon and the cheese, um, the croutons, of course, and always ask for the dressing on the side, right? So the dressing sometimes, if they're, if it's self-pour, the, um, the server or somebody is pouring the dressing, a lot of times it's, you know, too much. And again, that's where a lot of the fat and the calories are coming from, not so much the carbohydrate, but ask for the dressing on the side and um, you know, one tip is just to dip your fork in the dressing first and then to, to get a stab of the salad um, or maybe just, you know, just spread a little bit of the dressing around. Um, you could also use like lemon juice just to thin out the dressing um, so it kind of covers the salad a little bit more. If you're one that wants a little taste of the salad dressing with each bite of salad, um, it just will help you cut back on the calories because you're using less of the dressing itself. Good idea. Thanks. Okay. Um, any other any other tricks that you guys have kind of used as far as um, ways to cut calories um, when you're eating out? Hmm. 
Okay. They so all, that was kind of, go ahead. I was going to say, well, usually when I do get the salads yeah. now, I try not to use like the um, blue cheese dressing or the, the um, honey mm -hmm. mustard. I try to get more of a vinaigrette instead. Okay. Yep. yep. Right. I don't even, if they offer to bring bread to the table, I, we normally just tell them no, no bread. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And that's tough. Yeah. The same with even like the tortilla chips, right? So um, anytime you have those and you, and you get to the restaurant and you're hungry, you know, the tendency is there just to indulge and the chips and you don't realize even how, you know, how much you've eaten before the basket's empty and the same kind of thing with the bread. Yep. Yeah. So that's tough. That's it's tough if it's right in front of you to say no, you know, so like you said, even saying ahead of time, you know, mm -hmm. ask them not, not to bring it. Don't you bring idea. it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So, uh, you know, the other idea is just, you know, if, if a basket's brought to the table and again, you're with other folks, you put a couple on your plate, you know, and, and then sort of pass the basket down to the other side, right? So it doesn't mean that you can't enjoy and you can't taste, but just a way that you can kind of control and the temptation's not right in front of you, right? To keep kind of grabbing, you know, back. Um, another idea for an appetizer or kind of a salad would be like a caprese salad, with your mozzarella cheese and the, the basil and the tomato, your balsamic um, vinaigrette or the dressing. Um, but again, another high protein, low fat option. So just trying to, to look at the menu, you know, look for those things that do incorporate, again, starters and appetizers, um, incorporate more of the vegetables, maybe some lean protein without it being so um, heavy in the carbs or the starches. So, okay. So now let's think about, let's kind of move on to the main course. So now we're going to order our entree. Um, what are some healthy choices that you guys look for? Or, you know, if you're thinking about trying to make those better choices, what are things that you kind of gravitate towards on the menu? I like Asian food. So I'll a lot of times that's uh, meat and vegetables. I don't know what's in all the sauces, you know, and mm -hmm. I know there's a difference between the ones that are really sweet and the ones that are kind of medium, but I suppose they all have some measure of sugar in them. But, right. but in general, that's a lot of times meat and vegetables. Some things are breaded. Mm -hmm. I have a question about that. Uh, I like pad thai, and that comes with rice noodles. Are they right. are they equivalent to pasta noodles or better? Or is there a, should we just think of them like pasta? Yes. Okay. I don't have you. Are you familiar with the carb count, K for like rice noodles compared to regular noodles? K McGinnis yeah. is also a dietitian, so I was going to put her on the spot and get her. her input. Yeah. I wish I knew that answer, but I would think they'd probably be akin to regular pasta mm -hmm. noodles. Um, you know, I like pad thai too. So yeah. Um, yeah, the good thing about pad thai is it's not it's not as carb heavy as maybe a traditional pasta dish would be. So, but I think there's still carbs. I mean, but right. just not just not the number's not as big. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, and I love the idea, you know, like you said, Diana, with, as far as um, the Asian food, you have um, just the opportunity to, to choose things that have more of those vegetables, right? So that have the lean protein. So whether it's chicken and broccoli, um, or it has like the mixed vegetables, you know, there's, there is that opportunity to, to incorporate more of those. And then just maybe having a smaller portion of the rice noodles or, you know, the other type of lo mein or, or whatever type of pasta it is. Um, and, and usually, or even if it's rice, you know, like the fried rice that comes with your Asian dishes, the serving of that is usually like three or four times a portion. You know, you could stretch that over several meals so, um, you know, trying to, again, limit that at the beginning of that meal or when, it, when it's served, or if you, even if you get it takeout, right? You know, the, the larger portion of that takeout box is the rice. Yeah. It's the uh, fried rice or the steamed rice or, you know, and, and they do have brown rice. Some, some of the Asian restaurants will have brown rice as an option, 
Um, but again, it's just the quantity that they give. So just being mindful of that and trying to, you know, stretch that out over several meals um, with the, the rice or the, the lo mein, you know, can be helpful. And just trying to maintain that blood sugar control afterwards. Stacey, I was looking this up on uh, this is a website called purewow.com. And it says pasta and rice noodles are just about tied when it comes to calories, fat, and fiber, as well as on the carb front. Okay. Um, regular pasta has about two grams of sugar per serving, while rice noodles are virtually sugar free, and both are also free of cholesterol. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Very interesting. Um, so what about, so I know we kind of talked about tortilla chips, but what would you think as far as Mexican foods, what should we try to eat more of? And maybe what should we try to stay away from at a Mexican restaurant? <laughs> I know we, we talked about the tortilla chips that, that come at the beginning of the meal. And you're so hungry and Mexican is one of my boy's favorites. So we do eat Mexican a lot, but that's hard passing up the chips at the beginning. <laughs> I think I don't eat Mexican that much, but my guess would be something like um, fajitas or something. Yep. It's got a lot of the meat and vegetables. That's and right. you don't have to, I don't know, put that in a, um, you know, wrap it in anything. You could just eat that. By that's itself. right. Yep. Fajitas would be a great choice. Yep. So you, you could do the, the shrimp, the steak, the chicken, you know, fajitas with the vegetables for sure. And then even maybe have it with lettuce or, you know, have it um, with like a fajita bowl kind of thing. Um, so, you know, again, thinking about kind of the components of your Mexican food, you have the tortillas, whether they're flour or corn. Um, you've got rice sometimes that's served, you know, with a Mexican entree or a dinner plate. And then you've got the beans. So Mexican food can be higher, higher carbohydrate than we really realize or think of. Um, the corn tortillas. We're ready. Okay, sorry. So the, the corn, yeah, the corn tortillas can be um, a better choice than flour tortillas or just avoid them altogether, you know, and having the protein just served on like the bed of lettuce or trying to make more of a salad out of it than, um, you know, than a wrap or like um, Natalie was saying like a, tortilla, a burrito or anything like that. I like um, those taco bowls that have, um, you know, the guacamole in it. I'm sure the sour cream isn't so great for you, but um, it's, you know, the salad and meat and everything. But I, yeah. do, I do tend to eat the, eat the bowl, you know, the right. taco bowl. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I love, you know, the sour cream and the guacamole and all, like I want all, if I go to Moe's or something, I want all the stuff, you know, I'm one of those that I like. all. <laughs> so, so if you, you know, a lot of places will have the nutrition information available online. Um, and so when you look at it though, it's a, alarming. You're, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe. So, you know, even before you get to that restaurant, you know, looking at the nutrition information, so if it is one of those things, like I said, I want everything on it, maybe I'm only going to eat half. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to cut back my serving. I'm going to get the things that I like, but I'm, I'm going to cut back on the amount that I'm eating. So I still can control, you know, the, the nutrition density, I guess I should yeah. say, you know, of that. Yeah. 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 So I don't, I'm really trying to cook fish more at home, but I feel like when I go out, like that's another opportunity maybe to order fish. Um, from the menu, and especially if it's a grilled fish, um, not so much, I'm not a big fan of broiled, but again, might be an opportunity to order something like that that you normally wouldn't make at home, and you can make those healthy choices, like, you know, maybe if, even if it's shrimp, but the fish or shrimp seafood options, um, 
might, you know, again, be a healthier choice than the chicken or the steak, um, especially if it's a grilled, um, if it's prepared that way versus the breaded and the fried. Um, but the things that, you know, we tend to eat a lot of chicken at our house. So trying to incorporate some of those um, seafood options when we, you know, eat out is one thing that I try to do just to make a healthier choice. What about, um, so again, kind of still thinking about entrees, main courses, um, you know, what about a hamburger? Is there any way that we could cut back the carbs or maybe um, lighten up a burger if we were going out? I would say you could ask them to leave off the bun and just use your lettuce for a wrap. Yep. Uh, you could do that. You could still have the bun, but just eat the bottom, and not yep. the top. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just do one or the other. Yep. Mm -hmm. There's some places that will, um, Five Guys is one that has the option of um, skipping the bun, and you can either get the burger in a lettuce wrap or you can just get the burger in a bowl and then get the toppings on, si on the top. So again, I'm the topping person. I want all the good stuff. So um, the lettuce is kind of messy, right? But you could get it in a bowl with the lettuce and the pickles and the onions, whatever you wanted, um, and then just mm -hmm. avoid the, you know, all the bread. Um, and there's other places- they offered that. Yeah, and I don't know that it's one of those things on the menu, right? I mean, sometimes you have to ask, um, but they will ask you, is it an allergy? So are you allergic to the gluten like in the bread or is it just a preference? And I had to stop. I was like, you know, what are they asking? But then I realized because of the way they cook on the grill, you know, they're just asking, are you choosing not to have bread? You know, do, do we need to make it like gluten free or is it just your preference? You know, so, but just nice to think about, you know, that you do have those options in some places and maybe places like five guys that you wouldn't even think would be an option. So. Yeah, a healthier option. <laughs> I noticed yeah. that um, Marco's Pizza now serves pizza bowls without the without the crust. You can oh, get really? all, all the ingredients in a bowl. Okay, I'll have to look at that. I have not seen that, but that's I mean, what a what a great concept. And I was even thinking, you know, pizza with um, some of the things that we were going to talk about is just choosing a thinner crust, but you know, the um, just no bread at all would be a great option. Yeah. Have you, have any of you guys tried the cauliflower crust? I haven't. Yeah. So I've seen them where um, I shop at Aldi a lot just because it's so convenient to where I live, but even Aldi has a cauliflower crust pizza. And so you think it's going to be lower in carbs, but it's not really that much lower in carbs. So sometimes those kinds of things can be deceiving too, because you think you're choosing a, a you know, a, a lower carb option. So you always have to flip it over and look at the nutrition information. So I, I made cauliflower crust years ago and it was really just steamed cauliflower, um, I think eggs and like Parmesan cheese. So there weren't, there was not any carbs in it, but I'm sure with processing and packaging and trying to keep it freezer safe, you know, in to, to send it out to a grocery store like that, they've added some kind of carbs just to get it to stick together, you know, because without it, the cauliflower is just so watery, you know, it's got to have some kind of um, um, like a dry carb substance, if you will, you know, just to hold it together. So. I think it's got flour in there. Yeah. It's, so that's got to have something yeah. to stick together, right? Yeah. yeah, right. And that blaze pizza, they actually have a keto that is a pack of pizza crust that sounds like what you've done with the cauliflower and the Parmesan cheese. Okay. And then the Subway also has a new bowl. Okay. Like, so you can get a bowl of Subway. So I think it sounds like there's lots of opportunities for uh, some healthy dining out, right? Definitely. Because you think about, you know, a sub, a six inch sub is at least 45 grams of carbohydrate and that's just the bread. You think about everything that's in the middle of the sub, your, you know, whatever kind of deli meat, your veggies, your cheese, um, all of that's low carb. So that 45 grams of carbs 
coming from a six inch is just the bread. So when you take that away, um, you know, it, it really becomes that low carb, low carb meal. What else? Other little pl other places that um, that you guys have found that offer maybe some lower carb ideas or things that you've done just to cut back on the carbs at a restaurant. I go to Panera a fair amount, and I just noticed that they have a like a teriyaki chicken and broccoli bowl. Uh, now teriyaki has sugar mm -hmm. in it, but um, mm -hmm. uh, I haven't tried it. I will next time I go. I yeah. saw it, I saw it after I ordered. I saw that on the menu too, Diana. And then when I saw the price tag, I didn't order it. <laughs> but uh -huh, I get it. I think, I think because, um, but you know, not that it was so expensive, but I think for like a Panera type restaurant, I was like, oh, wow. But mm -hmm. one thing I do like that Panera will offer is a half sandwich. So you don't mm -hmm. have to order the full sandwich. So again, a way to, to reduce portions um, you know, they have an apple, you could get an apple as a side. So really thinking about a healthy choice, a half sandwich and an apple instead of maybe the chips could be, you know, a healthy choice in that, in that instance too. So it's just exploring, you know, exploring yes. the menu and, and finding some of those things. And, and these are helpful tips too, um, just from what you guys have seen. Okay. So we talked a little bit about, you know, the sides, just like the apple. Um, I spoke earlier at the beginning just about the vegetables. So your baked potatoes and sweet potatoes, sometimes people will ask, well, what if I choose the sweet potato instead of the baked potato? It is still starch, it's still a potato, still carbohydrate. Um, so one way to reduce the, the amount of carbohydrate, of course, is to cut it in half, take half home. Um, a lot of times we'll make um, like hash browns or I'll just slice a leftover potato and um, put it in a frying pan in the morning and, and um, you know, cook it kind of again to make hash browns. So again, trying to think about not having to eat all of it at that time that you're ordering, ordering out or eating out, but kind of reinventing. I told Natalie one time, if I ever had a cooking show, it's going to be reinventing leftovers. So how can I make this different the next time I eat it so that my family's not unhappy about eating the same thing over and over again and just keeping it um, interesting, maybe not fresh, but interesting. <laughs> so maybe just eating half the potato when you're out and then using it um, at another meal, you know, as a leftover. Um, your roasted and steamed vegetables will always be a good choice. Your broccolis. Um, a lot of places are offering like roasted green beans. Have you guys seen that? I've seen the um, Brussels sprouts on the menu, asparagus. So I feel like places are offering besides just green beans, right? Just plain green beans or something or coleslaw. You know, you do have more options for those vegetables, just depending on the restaurant, you know, choices of, of our places that you're choosing to go. So... And then, of course, always asking for double. You know, you could ask for two servings of broccoli instead of the potato, you know, if you wanted to, or like I said, just, um, or, or maybe another vegetable on the menu. And, and maybe it's not the accompaniment that they've recommended that comes with the entree, but asking, you know, can we substitute this for this um, is always an option. You, you know, you are the person that's paying for that meal. You're the customer and they want you to come back. You know, they want you to be happy. So don't feel, um, don't feel bad, don't feel awkward in asking for that because they, they do want to try to, um, to please their customers. So, okay. So what about dessert? So dessert's one of those things when I have, if I have diabetes, am I, you know, supposed to just always avoid dessert? What are y'all, what are your thoughts about that? Is dessert just off the table if you have diabetes? I'm going to jump right in there Natalie. and tell you, yeah, it's just, <laughs> I'm getting that creme brulee. This is off or that the table? Cake. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, okay. ma'am. I'm getting that cheesecake. I'm getting okay. my creme brulee. Yes, I am. Okay, yes, I okay. Am. you are getting it. Okay. Because yeah. <laughs> I normally really don't eat a lot of desserts. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, and the only time I'm going to eat them is usually if I'm out at a restaurant and if I see creme brulee, on that menu, I'm going to okay. save a little bit of room so I can get my creme brulee. <laughs> That's right. Other than that, if they don't have creme brulee, they don't have cheesecake, I don't even want dessert. Okay. I can skip it. 
Mm-hmm. Yep. Just just some of those. They just call your name. Get yeah, those yeah. called yeah. by name. <laughs> yes. yes. My baby, my husband, I, um, for whatever reason, he wanted uh, a strawberry cake. And now he can eat more sweets than I do. And I can have like one one donut in three months and I'm like, I'm good. And then I bring him home, let him eat them. But he wanted that strawberry cake. And I said, well, doggone, I'll make a strawberry cake. And I ate, I wanted to see what it tastes like myself. So I ate one, one little you know, piece about like that, a little square. And I told him, I said, the rest of that's pretty much yours because you know, I'm done now. <laughs> I've tasted it, yeah. I don't need it anymore. Yeah. But I know if you're probably eating well, out at a restaurant, you want to have like, if they have things that have a lot of fruit, maybe you'd want that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know the creme brulee yeah. and the cheesecake, yeah. not the choices, but at least throw some fruit <laughs> you on it. You want that something. too, but right, right, right. <laughs> Throw some fruit on if it. If they offer fresh fruit, yeah. If they offer yeah. fresh fruit, that would obviously be a great choice. But, but sometimes, so the first three bites of something is, is, is really going to satisfy that taste, right? So, you know, if you, it's not that you have to have a whole serving. So if you are dining out with somebody else, splitting it, right? Or or having a bite, pass it around the table kind of thing. So you still get that taste. You're not depriving yourself. You know, you're allowing yourself to enjoy that um, and just savor that taste, right? But again, you you do want to be mindful of the serving size and the portion, you know, of that, um, that dessert. So, it, it does not mean, you know, for a person with diabetes, it does not mean that you can never, ever have these things, especially I think for a lot of times when we're dining out, it is a celebration, you know, we're, again, we're either meeting a friend out and enjoying, um, you know, their company, or we celebrate an anniversary or a birthday. Um, but that celebration, again, you don't want to miss out on those kinds of things. So finding a way to incorporate some of those things that are higher calorie or higher carbs or higher sugar in moderation. You know, you still can fit into um, making those healthy choices, you know, when you're eating out just smaller portions of them, so. I found since the diagnosis that something happened and I I have way less craving for sweets. I think when you don't eat them, you Mm -hmm. crave them less. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I've gained weight during COVID, but it's not been for sweets. It's yeah. been, you know, it's been it's been carbs, and I I can't stay away from chips. So, mm-hmm. you know, that that would be my downfall instead of the cake. But I keep in my freezer a bag of Hershey miniatures, those little. Oh yeah. Uh, and if and if you know, I, I don't, I don't know how frequently I would have a craving just for chocolate and something sweet. So one of those little tiny little miniature Hershey bars, you know, like you say, it's a couple bites, but it's done. Yeah. So I think those little the miniatures are like five grams of carbohydrate. You know, it's it's mm-hmm. not much. The fun size. Um, I haven't looked recently, so they may have changed the serving or the like the portion of what it, but the fun size was only like 10 grams of carbohydrate. So absolutely, you can fit those things in because they are such a smaller serving, right? So you, um, you know, can still have that taste of the chocolate or whatever you're, you know, you're looking for a craving without, you know, just creating havoc on your blood sugar. Definitely. And Diana, I don't think you're alone. You know, I think so many people um, during COVID, you know, have gained weight. Um, COVID, I think, change, well, it changed everything, right? So maybe it changed your activity because we weren't going out, we weren't leaving the house as much. Um, changed our eating for our either because we didn't want to shop at the grocery store as, as often. Um, you know, maybe it's just some of those carbohydrate foods like the chips are comforting. You know, so we maybe we ate more of those, but it's, um, you know, I've had, I've heard so many people say that just that they have gained weight. And, and again, COVID changed how we've done everything, you know, so you're not, you're not alone. Yeah. Don't feel it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And hopefully I think the weather is supposed to be cooler, like starting tonight. Yeah. So it'll be nice to be able to get back outside and, and walk and, you know, to, to be more active. Um, hopefully soon too. 
any other uh, tips and tricks of things that, that you guys have done um, just in trying to, to make healthy choices that you could share with the group? I don't know if this is healthier or not, but uh, <laughs> Show Mars, that new restaurant in town in Lexington, I think it was Show Mars, they have um, a burger, but it's um, wrapped in a pita bread, wrapped in pita bread instead of a bun. Okay. So I tried that. Okay. I mean, it was good, it was different. Um, but yeah. I was like, hopefully that's better than having, you know, an, a big bun instead of, you know, just a little. Yeah. Meat. Um, yeah. So I think, um, yeah, I'd have to look at the nutrition information. So I think it probably depends on the size, you know, of the pita bread and the thickness of it. Um, and then, you know, compare it to a bun and the size of the bun, you know, but, um, yeah, I'd have to take a look. I haven't been. I, I read in a newsletter that they're um, going to, I guess, open a show Mars on Richland side. So oh, we've got the on. one in Lexington, but yeah, we haven't, we haven't been to this one here in Lexington yet. I like, I like them. I mean, I don't go all that often, but every once in a while, but the food is good there. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing I try to do, I do try to cut back on potatoes. So if we're having, if I want mashed potatoes or something like that, I will try to substitute the cauliflower instead. Okay. I've done, I've been yeah. Doing that pretty good, you know, just doing cauliflower mashed instead of regular um, potatoes. Um, what was it I made the other day? Some kind of, uh, oh, it was a buffalo chicken dish. And it included uh, rice cauliflower. They had a lot of stuff mm. in it, rice cauliflower, some kale, uh, bell peppers and stuff. So as much stuff as I can find that limits mm -hmm. the carbs and throws in vegetables, because I always hear um, Roberta jump in my head telling yeah. me, eat your vegetables, it put vegetables with every meal, even breakfast. So I'm always trying to throw some yes. vegetables in everywhere. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So you're right. You know, even with the rice cauliflower, you're substituting or you're eliminating the rice, but you're also, you know, so the cauliflower is supposed to take the place of the rice, but you're also adding that as a vegetable. So I love that. What about, what about soups? I just made a pot of vegetable soup. Mm. What do you have to be careful of? With that? Yeah. So with a vegetable soup, you know, it's more it of a broth have, base. Uh -huh. um, it didn't have, so didn't have potatoes in it. it you know, would, it had hamburger meat in it. But, okay. But, you know, it was mainly vegetables we can eat. Yeah, absolutely. So again, you know, a high fiber choice. So that's, a, I mean, the vegetable soup is a great idea because of all those vegetables. Um, it's going to be, you know, higher in fiber. And the fact that you didn't put the potatoes in that can sometimes just be a filler. Mm -hmm. um, you've cut back the carbs, right? So if you were to buy a can of soup, um, that, you know, again, it might have more of the potatoes. Potatoes aren't yes. that expensive, right? So it's more yes. of that filler yes. taking the volume. But when you make something like that from, from scratch or from at home, you can throw in all those non-starchy <laughs> vegetables that, you know, will really be better for you to choose. Yeah. So. Since it's fall coming, you know, mm -hmm. soup weather. Yeah, so. yeah definitely. Yeah, and I my think, favorite you know, um, soups for the fall, as soon as it gets cool enough and stays cool, is uh, Zupa Toscana, like they make at Olive Garden. Okay. Oh, I love that. I, oh I my, make that. Yes, and it's so quick and easy. And we use, um, I don't remember if the one at Olive Garden has the spinach, but we use kale because it's more filling. Mm -hmm. And um, yes. sometimes I will substitute the potatoes with cauliflower, or if I want potatoes, I use red potatoes instead, and cut back on the amount of potatoes. And we, if I use the burger, I use like um, ninety ten burger, okay. 
So it's like lower in fat, or no. we like to eat uh, deer meat here. So we have deer sausages uh -huh. and stuff cooked up. So I may substitute that instead. Mm -hmm. That is like, I wait on fall just to make <laughs> that. <laughs> that sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, that kale in there is great. Yes, yes. Glad to know there's somebody other than me that likes to make that. Oh, I love it. <laughs> now y'all have got me wanting to try it. I've never made that. <laughs> oh, Ooh, you would love it. Sounds it's good. got cream in it, you know, yeah. so that's, yeah. you know, that's one thing, but it, it's worth it. I just think of the kale as I'm pouring the cream. <laughs> yeah. That's right. It substitutes, it, it cuts the other one out, right? <laughs> <laughs> I have to send you that recipe. Um, yeah, it. Natalie, do that. I'd love and that. You can always use low fat, you know, um, to not be full fat cream or something like that. I think I was reading something too about how to make that um, even healthier. So I don't know. I got to check on that. It may be something you could put in there like Greek yogurt instead of the cream. Yeah. Yeah. I may, and I may try that out and see what it tastes like. Uh, I'm going to eat it with full, full cream. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of your cheesecake, Natalie. There you oh, go. Yeah. <laughs> Put my cream in the, in the kale. There you go. <laughs> Any other ideas or recommendations? Um, you know, I, I again I think the main the main point is um, for you to use, you know, good judgment in when you're eating out and still enjoying the reason that you're eating out, you know, especially if it's a celebration, I think with, um, for birthdays, anniversaries, um, trying to still make those good choices, but not depriving yourself either. So even if it's just a bite of an unhealthy choice, you know, um, that is fine. And you give yourself that grace. Um, but even throughout the day, you know, ahead of that kind of special meal or um, a meal that you know that you're going to indulge, you want to be more active. You know, you want to make sure that you've taken your diabetes medication if you're on medications. You know, try to do all of those right things, um, but, you know, and, and not sabotage the whole day, but trying to be more mindful of, of all the other things, you know, during the day so that you don't then have problems with your blood sugar that night or even into the next day. So it's all about balancing those things. And just remember, you know, you are the customer. Um, so it's important for you to ask questions about how things are prepared or ask if you can make a substitution um, in something like that so that you get, you know, really what you want um, at, at the restaurant when you're ordering as well. Well, thank you guys so much for calling in. Um, was there any other questions or any other um, comments? I was just going to say, even though a lot of this is, you know, I've heard before, but the realignment of us doing this every now and again is just very helpful. They're, to me, the biggest value is the reminder of everything. Yeah. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, thank, thank you, Diana. And I, I think, um, you know, too, just to hear the ideas that you guys have shared, you know, just the little things that you found that worked for you or what you found at Marco's, you know, that, that I haven't seen. So I appreciate just the sharing as well. Thanks for letting me jump on. Thanks, Kay. All right, well, I appreciate you getting on here and like Diana says, reminding us of what we should be doing uh, when we go to eat out, whenever we finally get to eat out again with, uh, <laughs> with COVID. It's been a long time since I've been to a restaurant. So um, this is good information and good information if we want to try some of these things at home too. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yep. Just think about that plate, you know, whether you're eating out or whether you're preparing a meal at home you know, trying to make half of that plate be those non-starchy vegetables. And it doesn't leave room for as much of the starch, you know, but um, yeah, a great way to balance your meals at home or when you're eating out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank y'all.
we have another meeting um, next month. We have one more coming. And that'll be Roberta Jump talking about diabetes and depression. Hmm. Very timely topic. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Natalie, for arranging it. No problem. All right, y'all have a good evening. Thank you.